valve. Can your radio do this? Only one radio can give you stereo sound this big, yet is small enough to fit almost anywhere. The extraordinary new Wave Radio from Bose. Press the remote control and hear sound from a radio like you've never heard before. Big, rich sound that fills the room. You hear music the way it was meant to be heard. Clear, full, incredibly lifelike. You've got to hear the Wave Radio to believe it. And now you can, in your own home. Satisfaction guaranteed. Call us toll free to learn how. And we'll deliver the Wave Radio to your door. Experience big stereo sound from a radio. Call today for more information. It will make a difference in the way you listen to music. A big difference. watching to see if it's going in. Jackson for three. They're watching the yard. And switch. Rainbow. It's up. Feeling it come off of the follow through. It's good. They don't need to watch the hole. You're a shooter. They know oh, yes. it's going in. Look at this. <laughs> the Grizzlies take on Harper and the Mavs tonight at 7.30. Kicks. And slides. The turf is hard. The game is rough. The stakes are high. The NCAA Women's Soccer Finals, Sunday at 2 on Fox Sports Rocky Mountain. Forget what you think about women's basketball and prepare yourself for battle. Number one, Stanford takes on USF. Stanford battles San Francisco, Sunday at 5 on Fox Sports Rocky Mountain. sunny afternoon here in St. George, Utah. Hanson Stadium, the Dixie Rotary Bowl as the Dixie Rebels take on the Raiders of Grand Rapids Community College. Hi, I'm Steve Klauke along with Harry Justbig and we're happy to bring you this football game this afternoon and Harry, you were on the selection committee for this ball game. What enticed you about these two clubs? Well, the first thing you see in Dixie College is a team that's been ranked over the years uh, high, this year as high as number two in the country uh, before slipping to Western Arizona uh, in the middle of the season. Grand Rapids was a team that started in the top 15, has gradually climbed the charts and now is number six. What a great matchup. Well, if you like the running game, you're going to love this afternoon's ball game. You've got two outstanding ground games. That's right. Roderick Johnson for Dixie College, 2,338 yards, the all-time leading rusher in NJCAA history. Uh, is going to be a tremendous guy to watch today. And Grand Rapids has a good one, too, and Andrew Cochran. Andy Cochran is a tough guy that doesn't have the same physical stature that Roderick does, but I'm telling you, he can do things with a football. Now, the field conditions could come into play. There was a high school football championship game here three weeks ago, kind of chopped off the field. That's right, and on top of that, the desert had an inch and a half of rain on top of that, which is about a quarter of their yearly uh, fall. So it's not the best, but it's going to be great football weather and a good condition today. Sunshine, marching bands, and more. We've got a good one for you. Dixie versus Grand Rapids. It's the Dixie Rotary Bowl. We'll have it for you right after this. hours. 
dollars for one priceless sports moment? Don't bellyache about it. Run over to the phone and order the all-new video collection that goes wall to wall with nothing but the most outrageous instant replays ever. The totally incredible sports collection from Global. Call now and for the first time ever, you'll get not five, not even six, but seven unforgettable sports videos. All for one low price of just $19.97. You heard it right. Seven hilarious videos for less than 20 bucks. There's no catch. Just hours of the most thrilling, the most chilling, and the just plain weirdest moments in sports history. All in one collection. At one low price, you won't run into anywhere else. Just $19.97 and you get incredible football plays. Hockey fights and big hits. Bob Euchre's wacky world of sports. Nash and Zulo's Believe It or Else. The Sports Hall of Shame. Superstars of basketball and superstars of football. Seven full-length videos that'll entertain your family and friends for years. So call now to get hours of punishing hits and shoestring catches by today's biggest superstars like Emmett Smith and Wayne Gretzky. Plus a few Bush League athletes you'll have to see to believe. It's the best video value anywhere. And if you don't agree, we'll double your money back. Guaranteed. If you like your sports over the top, call now to get the totally incredible sports collection. Seven knockout videos for only $19.97. No other collection gives you more laughs, more gas, more bang for your buck. So drop what you're doing, put your fingers in motion, and call now. Get your credit card ready and call 1-800-253-8665 to get the totally incredible sports collection for you or your favorite sports fan. Seven wild videos, a more than $100 value for just $19.97, and a double your money back guarantee. Call 1-800-253-8665. And today's game is brought to you in part by Stephen Wade Auto Centers. By Utah Power. Color Country GMC Truck Dealers. Vince Realty. And by Mountain Fuel. And we're ready for kickoff. It's underway, end over end. It's going to be fielded by Wade Perkins at the five. Angles across the 15, tries to turn the corner across the 20, bounces off a hit down the sideline and is finally pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line, forced out of the play by James Kohlenberg. And so it'll be Dixie starting on offense with good field position at their own 35-yard line. Perkins came in averaging over 28 yards per return, so he was right on average there. The offensive starting lineup on the line, the big guys, Ayala and Kolarowski the tackle, Simmons, Arsenega the guards, and Seth Little is your center. The fullback is Brandon Camp, the All-America running back, Roderick Johnson, Mike Leithman the tight end, Brooks and Hutchings are the wide receivers. And the quarterback is T.D. Croshaw, the son of the head coach. And they're actually going to gain some more yardage on a late hit. And so now the Rebels will start at midfield, the 50-yard line. We had a late hit there, Steve, uh, coming out. Dixie's going to have great field position at the 50. Again, watch 32, Roderick Johnson, the tailback. Averaging 240 yards, and they're going to throw on first down. Croshaw looking left, and it is almost intercepted. Right through the hands of Michael Hutchings, the intended receiver, and then right through the hands of the defensive back, the linebacker, actually, Bill Unger. Steve, I'm just wondering if Greg Croshaw has made the stadium yet. They throw on first down. They've got the leading rusher in the, uh, the country. <laughs> Defensively for Grand Rapids, a 3-4 front. Evans and Treese the ends. John Fusco is the nose guard. Linebackers, Dennison head on the outside. Hunger and Spooler on the inside. Again, throw shot a pass and no one there. As it looked like Hutchings was held up at the line of scrimmage and never got to the outside. And so very quickly, the Rebels are third and ten. What you saw there, Steve, is you had tight man-to-man -man bump coverage. Uh, the receiver was supposed to convert that to a fade route. And uh, little miscommunication, didn't get the route adjusted. Third and 10. Despite the great running game, this Rebel team has a good passing game. Crochaw completes 58% of his aerials. Third and 10 from midfield. And they mishandle the snap from center. The ball is loose. Grand Rapids says they have it. Waiting for the official signal, and they do. And 
So the first mistake of the game belongs to the Dixie Rebels. Two incomplete passes, and now a mishandled snap from center, and the first turnover goes to the Raiders. Steve, it looks like he just never got the ball from the center right there, and uh, one of the things that just eats you up alive as a coach is to have uh, things that uh, happen early, turnover, giving the opponent a, a first down in your own territory. Victor Redrick near, wide to the near side. Diedrich Paul wide to the outside. On first and 10 at the 48-yard line of Dixie. Backs in the eyes you'll see all day long. The give is to Cochran. Slips through one tackle. Finds some daylight. And pounds his way inside the 45. The 44-yard line. De Quintus Smith, the free safety, in on the hit for the Rebels. By Robert Barlow. Offensively for the Raiders of uh, Grand Rapids Community Grand College. Rapids. Right tackle Up front, Gary Leach Ballard. and Ballard the tackles. Right Dowser and Giroux, the guard. And Garen Pierre, Pierre in the middle. The fullback, Michael Harrima. Andrew Cochran, and the leading rusher for this Grand Rapids Leach. team. Kevin Bozek, the tight end. Paul and Redrick are the wideouts. And the quarterback is Dan Strowinski. Up under center on a second down and seven. Strowinski on the give to Cochran, finds a little bit of room up the middle, but not much. Maybe picked up a couple of yards, and that is all. Nice linebacker play that time. Andrew Takiaho in on the stop for the Rebels. Nice series of downs to start with. They're going to get, Grand Rapids is going to get their guys off and on the ball, get a hat on uh, the defenders right here, Steve. Uh, try to get the jitters out a little bit. Doing a good job here. I think one of the things you're going to look for here is efficiency in offense. And uh, that's what Coach Julian is going to look for today. As you'll see most of the afternoon, the backs are in the eye. Redrick wide to the left, Paul to the right. To move it on the line, no markers. Drowinski rolling right, firing right, and it is complete. Just outside the 25-yard line to Dietrich Paul, the 5'11", 160-pound sophomore from Kissimmee, Florida, and that'll be good for a first down. Steve, anytime you're going to have a good running game like Grand Rapids has, you've got to expect the play-action pass. Here we see that... Uh, they have uh, a bootleg action, go to the boundary, and uh, catch the receiver coming across the field. First and 10, Grand Rapids at the 26-yard line of Dixie. Again, Paul wide right, Redrick wide left. Strowitzki. Under center, Garrett Pierre awaiting the snap. And we've got movement this time. Markers on the field. And finally, Strowitzki, who recovered the bobbled snap, gets shoved back to the 31-yard line. But let's see if... We had a movement on the line first, or if uh, Dixie jumped offside. And there's our referee for today's game, Richard Jones, a veteran crew out of the Big West, the Big Sky, and the Western Athletic Conference. And it's going to be an encroachment call against the Rebels. Again, mistakes early, Steve, is something that uh, we've got to make sure we, that Dixie takes care of. Not to buy up. And Leedy, Sam Leedy on the ends. Fred Leedy, Mike Duga are the tackles. Alapipo and Barlow, the linebackers. Takiaho, the middle linebacker. Flinders and Perkins at the corners. Rogers, the strong safety. And Smith, the free safety. Double tight end offensively on first and five at the 21-yard line. The give is to the fullback, Harama. And no running room at all up the middle. Maybe squeezed a yard out of it, and that is all. Steve, right there, looked like that uh, Grand Rapids decided to go into a red zone type of set, two tight ends, the eye, uh, just bringing down more people in the box for uh, Dixie as far as on defense. They tried to run the trap play, just didn't go anywhere. Mike Nuga on the stop, number 96 there, six foot 258, a sophomore out of Hawaii. 49 tackles. He had seven quarterback sacks and two forced fumbles this year. Greg Croshaw, the veteran head coach of this Rebel Ball Club, outstanding record. This team has won seven of the nine Rotary Bowls that they have participated in. Second down, we'll call it four yards to go at the 21-yard line. The give is to Cochran up the middle, has some room, has a first down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. And that time, Harry, it was a case of, uh, not a, it didn't look like there was a lot of running room, but Cochran found just enough space to get through and pick up the first down, a gain of six. Nice lead play there by Grand Rapids, and I'm going to tell you what, the, one of the key people for this, this ball club today is going to be the fullback. Right there, you saw a good lead block inside, got the crack, enough yards for the first down. 
Adric Paul is out wide to the right. Brandon Van Dyke is the extra tight end. He's lined up on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Bozek, the starting tight end, is on the right side. Drowinski on the give to Cochran. Turns the corner. He's inside the 10 and down to the 7 yard line. Pickup of nearly 8 yards for Andrew Cochran, who averaged six and a half yards per carry this season. Boy, you saw that bounce play starting to develop, and you thought, boy, he's going to hit the end zone. But you've got, uh, what you're going to see right here is good pursuit by the Dixie Rebel uh, defense to get outside. A little bit of that speed that uh, Coach Croshaw recruits uh, from the area. Finally strung out and brought down on the play by Charles Rogers, the strong safety. But as we mentioned, a pickup of eight, we'll call it second down and two at the seven yard line as Grand Rapids try to take advantage of an early Dixie turnover. In motion is Paul. Drowinski on the give to Cochran and he gets stood up in the backfield and probably lost a yard on the play. And knifing in to make the initial contact was the cornerback, Kurt Flinders. I'm going to tell you what, when you get down in this area, two tight ends, uh, Dixie right now is, is loading up for nothing but one thing, Steve, and that is the run game. Uh, you saw basically nine people in the box or from tight end to tight end that were ready there to support the run. So, top third down situation here. Let's see if they come back with play action or, or try to get on the edge. Third down, short ball out wide to the left. Again, the back's in the eye. Cochran, the deep back. Strowinski on the give to Cochran. Cuts outside of block, gets strung out and tripped up and dropped. At the 11-yard line, a loss of nearly four yards on the play. An excellent job by the Dixie defense stringing out that play. And the blocking really, on this case, Harry, broke down. There was nobody out there to lead for Andrew Cochran, the freshman out of Messick, Michigan. Well, that was the same play that they had the nice eight-yard game, trying to bounce the ball outside, trying to hook the end, and uh, that time great support by the Dixie Rebels and uh, getting the loss on the play. We'll have a field goal attempt, see who can get on the board first. John Latinovich with a 28-yard attempt. He was only 5 of 12 in the field goal department this year. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is no good. It's off wide to the left. So the Dixie Rebels withstand the opportunity for Grand Rapids to take the early lead as the turnover gave Grand Rapids excellent field position. However, they were unable to capitalize, and we are still scoreless with 9.33 to play here in the first quarter. So head coach Greg Croshaw dodges a bullet. No score, 9.33 remaining in the first quarter here on the Dixie Road. This is Mary Ann Barnacle. She and her family were attacked by a silent killer in their home. It was at that time when my husband was passing out, my heart was racing, my dad was having chest pain, and, and my children were irritable, so I figured something was, was wrong. The Barnacles are among the thousands of people in the U.S. poisoned by carbon monoxide each year. Nearly 300 die. To protect your family from carbon monoxide poisoning, Make sure appliances are installed properly and operated safely. Examine vents and chimneys for rust and loose connections. Have your heating system inspected every year by a qualified technician and install carbon monoxide detectors that meet the new UL standard. Never burn charcoal indoors. Never use a gas range or oven to heat the house. Never operate fuel burning appliances in a closed room and never run a car in a closed attached garage. Welcome back to the Dixie Rotary Bowl. No score. Dixie with a third and five at their own 25-yard line. Roderick Johnson on a couple of carries, picking up five yards. Johnson, the deep back in the eyes. There's movement on the line. Jeff Simmons, the left guard for Dixie, moving, and that'll set the Rebels back five and leave them at third down and ten. Well, Roderick Johnson getting a chance to touch the ball on the first two plays of this particular position after not seeing it all in the initial possession of the game. And I think what you saw in those two plays, too, the, the attack-style defense that Fred Julian talked about with us last night, Steve, he, he's going to get people uh, uh, up on the line of scrimmage in the case before um, trying to bring the strong safety on a blitz. Jeff Simmons jumping too soon, and so moving the, the Rebels back five yards, third and ten. Crow shot a throw, looking over the middle, ball tipped into the air and incomplete. In and out of the hands of the tight end, Mike Leatham, as Croshaw was on target, but Leatham unable to latch onto it. It's fourth down in a punting situation. 
for the Rebels, who have uh, had uh, three plays and out here, two plays and a fumble on their first possession. This is a team that averages nearly 40 points per game on offense. We had a, had a nice play right there, a little pop pass to the tight end. Nobody covering him in man coverage, and uh, if he would have caught that ball, we've got it, Dixie would have gone a long way. Shane Hollins back to receive the punt from Neil Winterton, who averaged a little over 30 yards per punt this year. High spiraling kick, driving Hollins back to his 33. Sidesteps a hit there. Finds a little bit of running room, a little more room, and finally gets dragged out the 40-yard line as Shane Hollins made something out of nothing on that punt return. I'm telling you what, Dixie looked like they had him wrapped up, and all of a sudden he sidestepped one, sidestepped another, and uh, made about a seven-yard gain on that return, putting him again in nice field position. So Grand Rapids, who drove down and missed on a 28-yard field goal attempt on their initial possession of the football game, has an opportunity here, first and 10 at their own 40-yard line. First quarter of play, no score. 11th Dixie Rotary Bowl. Max again in the eye. Diedrich Paul wide right. Victor Redrick wide left. Drewinsky to throw. Slips a bit. Now fires out of his cut by Bozek, the tight end inside the 45 and tripped up at the 42 yard line. That'll be a gain of nearly 18 yards of the first down. Kevin Bozek, the tight end, only 10 catches during the course of the season, but six of them have gone for first downs. Steve, again, play action pass. They've run the football. Uh, getting outside, he actually had a chance to run this thing, but uh, uh, tight end, dragging across, gets a nice gain. We're in Dixie Rebel territory now. Drewinsky, a couple of times now, is thrown very sharply and very accurately while on the move. And double tight end with Van Dyke in the lineup. Ball is out wide left. Drewinsky. Ready to change the play, possibly at the line of scrimmage. Gives to Cochran, cuts inside his fullback block. Inside the 35 and down to the 31 and close to another Grand Rapids first down. You hit the nail right on the head there, Steve. They changed the play at the line of scrimmage, looking like they were going to, to their right. Saw the defensive alignment over-adjusted and uh, went to the left side. Nice kick out block. Good first down. Grand Rapids first ball down, club, Grand Rapids. like Dixie, 9 and 1 during the regular season. They outscored their opponents 317 to 87, led by veteran head coach Fred Julian. Enjoying an opportunity here to play in the Dixie Rotary Bowl for the second time in four years. First and ten for the Raiders at the 30 of the Rebels. This is the backup tailback, Rob Thorogood in the lineup, and he picks up nearly six down to the 24-yard line. Thorogood, he carried the ball 83 times during the regular season. Sophomore out of Logansport, Indiana, 5.2 yards per carry average on the year. A little counter action right here, Steve, and um, I'm telling you what, if he doesn't slip right there, he's got a lot of room to the outside. They get the nice kick out blocked by the guard to lead up with the tackle, and looking like a good gain. Still have second and five. At the 25 of Dixie, again, two tight ends in. Strowinski makes the delay, rolls right under pressure, and it is incomplete. Good defensive play by Kurt Flinders, who had two breakups during the regular season. Stepped in front of the intended receiver and knocked it away. Little anticipation. I think you, you go to the well four times here, Steve. You're going to see the corner out there sit, sit down and uh, wait for the tight end coming across. Jen Struinski throwing on the run. Had it on target for the tight end, Bozek, but Flinders coming off his man made the play, leaving Grand Rapids with a third and five at the Dixie 25 yard line. Scores just past the midway point of the first quarter of this 11th Dixie Rotary Bowl. Look for some pressure here, Steve, by the defense. They blitz it on the delay. The give is to Cochran. Cuts it outside. It is cooked up and brought down. And there's Kurt Flinders again, making a fine defensive stop. Stopping Cochran after a gain of only one. Otherwise, if Flinders doesn't make the hit, Cochran doesn't stop until he gets to the end zone. And once again, the Rebels able to hold. It's a fourth and four, and Latinovich is going to come in and try another field goal. Now, he's not very accurate, but Coach Fred Julian telling us last night that he has got a good leg, but is very inconsistent. This will be a 42-yard attempt. Strowinski, the quarterback, is the holder has the distance, and it is no good off to the left. 
So John Latinovich, Joe for two in the field goal. And once again, the Rebel defense holds. And we are scoreless here with 519 remaining here in the first quarter. So the field advantage has gone to Grand Rapids, but it is nothing, nothing on the board here in the first quarter of the 11th Dixie Rotary Bowl. outdoors and at Stephen Wade Auto Centers they can help you make the most of your outdoor experience. With so many exciting 4x4s, trucks and convertibles to choose from, Stephen Wade makes getting there a whole lot of fun. With excellent financing, friendly people and the largest selection in southern Utah, your Stephen Wade Auto Centers are a great place to start your outdoor adventures. I don't think I can stress enough the uniqueness of the type of people. We brought in a gentleman from General Motors to work with our automotive program a few months ago because we wanted to develop a partnership for training automotive technicians. And he said, Bob, you're too small. He said, we need more dealers. And, uh, and I, I convinced Jerry to come on out from Detroit and see St. George. And after he saw our students and the people in the community, the clean streets, the, uh, the modern businesses, uh, the high-tech facility we have at the college, he said, uh, you'll have a partnership in two years with for General Motors. No score on a beautiful late fall afternoon here in St. George, Utah. Scoreless Dixie Rebels with their second position, or third position rather of the football game at their own 24 yard line. And Croshaw fakes the leg, gets it off short and it's caught outside the 30 and down the sideline and stepping out of bounds. At the 40 yard line is Morgan Bingham, the fullback. And that's his first reception of the year. And what a good time for the Dixie Rebels. What works for one, Steve, can work for the other. Play action pass on first down. Uh, a lot of pressure here inside by the linebacker. They get outside, get the end scooping in. The pack just slips out. And nice pass by Croshaw. That's only the third reception by a Dixie fullback the entire season. Mark Henderson in the lineup comes wide to the near side. Hutchings wide to the far side. The pass goes Hutchings' way, and it's incomplete, overthrown. Groshaw had to release that ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to, Harry. Yes, he did. He uh, had pressure from the outside. The 3-4 defense uh, brought both the outside linebackers that time. Had to get the ball up and out, and uh, this time they did convert the uh, fade off the bump coverage, but uh, a little bit long. Roshaw struggling in the early going in the passing department. Second down and Ted at their own 40-yard line. Grand Rapids showing blitz. They come. The pitch goes to Roderick Johnson. Tries to find some daylight and can't as he gains only a yard. And one of the things that was talked about, Greg Croshaw, the head coach of Dixie, felt that Grand Rapids defensively would place eight men inside the box, try to force them to throw, and so far they've been very successful in stopping Roderick Johnson. They certainly have, and one of the things that Fred Julian also talked about last night is that, you know, he's going to hit those gaps hard, and that time you saw, as you called it, Steve, uh, linebacker bringing gap pressure right now, not allowing uh, uh, those guards and tackles to get off and get good blocks. So uh, a lot of adjustments are being ha made by those big guys up in front right now. Rather than the eye, they shift into a deuce backfield on third and ten. Groshaw straight back, dumps it off, incomplete, intended for the backup tight end, Bucky Orton, but that one a little too hot to handle. Late coverage from the inside linebacker, Bill Unger, but once again, the Rebel offense struggling will have to kick it away. Well, I think that uh, they found something here. Gordon Jolly, the offensive coordinator, has found something. With that pressure, they're, they're getting different linebackers covering the tight end up the middle. Uh, pretty soon, Dixie's going to connect on one of them, which is going to have a long game. Neil Winterton back to punt. Did not have a single punt blocked in 39 attempts during the regular season. Shane Hollins to return for Grand Rapids. Had a seven-yard punt return early in the ballgame. 
low wobbly kick. Hollins will let it hit. Takes a side angle hop and will be down at the 27 yard line. So Grand Rapids first and 10 at their own 27. Still no score, 408 remaining here in the first quarter. Grand Rapids has had the two scoring opportunities but missed on field goals of 28 and 42 yards. And really, the Grand Rapids offense has had the advantage field position-wise, Harry, but they haven't been able to do anything with it. Well, that's right. And, and during the course of the game, you find that uh, field position plays a huge part. Right now, I, I know Dixie would love to have those two field goal opportunities that they've had. Hopefully, they can stop them, switch the momentum. Victor Redrick is the slot man on the right on first down. And Strowinski to throw. Looks to the right sideline. Incomplete. De Dietrich Paul, the intended receiver, had his feet go out from under him. Otherwise, he would have been wide open to the 48-yard line. Little change up offensively. This time on first down, they go to the, the, the pass and uh, try to get the uh, comeback route to the far side. Uh, good coverage out there. The receiver slipped and fell, but... Uh, it's not surprising that these two teams are struggling. It's been since November the 2nd that Grand Rapids last played, and Dixie hasn't played since the 9th of November. That's right. So little bugs getting worked out here early. Ball to the far side. Redrick to the near side on second down and 10. And again, hard count by Struinski, and he gets bowled over by Mike Nuga, the tackle. He already was drawn offside. Let's see if there's an additional infraction for the hit on the quarterback. And Struinski with the hard count, Harry, and Mike Nuga got fooled. I'm telling you what, right now, what the quarterback is doing is a good job changing the snap count, getting their defense out of sync listening to those snap counts down after down you see right there coach brockman talking to his player um, these guys are an aggressive bunch they're 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 replicating their head coach a guy that's going to go after him and uh, he actually calls a defensive shot a break for mike duga he was only called for the encroachment nothing on the hit on struinski so it's second down and five for grand rapids at their own 32. And it's Cochran on the leg, tries to turn the corner, gets strung out, and down he goes. Great job of the strong safety, Charles Rogers, who grabbed a hold of Cochran and wouldn't let go. Another counter tray uh, play to the tight end side right here. Uh, what you're going to see, the guard tackle pull here, number 75, is going to try to block uh, the safety, and he does a good job pushing off, stringing the play out, getting help from his... Uh, Safety man Flinders, corner Flinders. Rock Leach, 6'3", 285 pound freshman trying to lead that time, but uh, Charles Rogers able to make the play. So third and five now for the Raiders at their own 32. Slots to the near side. And it's Drewinski to pass, rolling left, looking, looking, throwing, and it's nearly intercepted. Right through the hands of the linebacker, Salu Alafipo. And then almost caught on the reflection by Diedrich Paul, but it falls to the turf. It'll be fourth down and five, and a punting situation for the Grand Rapids Raiders. One thing I think you're seeing right now, a little bit of respect by uh, the Grand Rapids offense, uh, understanding the great pass rush, the, the, the intensity that those guys have. You've seen, Steve, everything that's gone outside, whether by play action or by spread out. And uh, that time, almost a, a big play to change the field position for uh, Dixie. John Latinovich, the putter, averages 42.6 yards per kick. And now we have a timeout. I believe there was some confusion on the Dixie side as far as personnel on the field. But no indication really as to who the timeout was charged to. And uh, Red Julian, the head coach, talking things over with our referee today, Richard Jones. Well, right now, I think what we had, as you called it, Steve, we had an extra guy out there on uh, the uh, punt coverage or uh, punt return team for Dixie. And uh, he's getting a little bit of an earful by... Uh, 
Coach Croshaw and the special teams coach, Coach Brockman, right now. A few of those mistakes, Steve, that you talked about earlier, uh, not having played for four or five weeks, a couple of the things timing-wise, you've got to get back in the groove of uh, getting the feel of the pads and hitting an opponent uh, instead of yourselves. And uh, I think you're going to start to see a little bit more intensity come along as we go through here in this game. So it'll be fourth down and five with Sinovich, as we mentioned, the number five punter in the entire nation at 42.6. Wade Perkins is back. He'll receive the punt. Looking into the bright sunshine here in St. George, Utah. Tinovich, booming kick, driving Perkins back to the 19. Dances around, tries to find a hole, slips, markers all over the place as Perkins is cranked down at the 35-yard line, but that return's going to be taken back, and the Dixie Rebels are going to be pinned back deep in their own end. Yeah, you saw just one of the simple mistakes, a guy just getting a little bit over-aggressive and trying to get the, the wall started. Um, caught the man and uh, clipped him from the side. Uh, it's going to back him up now, looks like, uh, inside the 20-yard line. And we mentioned a veteran officiating crew today. Richard Jones is the referee. Ron Moore is the umpire. Scott Allen, the back judge. The head linesman, Gordon Oborn. Dee Talbot's the side judge. Kim Nelson, the field judge. And Jack McDonald, the line judge. Again, all of them worked the Western Athletic Conference, the Big Sky, and the Big West during the course of the regular season. So that clipping penalty will move the Dixie Rebels all the way back to the 17-yard line. So the Rebels trying to get something going offensively. I believe only one first down so far in the contest. And we have 2.57 remaining in our first quarter. Still nothing, nothing. Two high-powered offenses being shut down so far. Slots to the left this time. And the give is to Roderick Johnson. Finds some daylight. Cuts it to the outside. He has one man to beat. And is finally driven down by the linebacker, Bill Unger. Inside Grand Rapids territory, about the 45-yard line, is Roderick Johnson broke through and that is the problem Harry when you have that many people up the line of scrimmage once it's broken through it can go for a big game watch to your left side here Steve you see that all the pressure's coming up inside they get a little crack and wall them off there's no safety because he's up playing tight end man-to-man -man coverage Roderick gets a chance to break it outside and get free big play by Dixie College Roderick Johnson now 34 yards on four carries this time the fullback Brandon Camp powers his way into the middle picks up maybe three to the 42 yard line stacked up in the middle among others in on the stop the linebackers Carmel Dennis Roderick just then uh, looked over at Croshaw and says okay hey, coach pointed to myself he said give me the ball again I want to go really a competitor second down just outside the 42-yard line. Again, only the second first down picked up by the Rebels in this first quarter. Slots to the near side on second down and seven. Pressure in the middle. The give is to Johnson. Spins nicely to the outside. Inside the 40, driven down at the 35-yard line, close to a first down. Again, I don't know if the offense is seeing the pressure that's coming, but right there, the free safety tipped off right away that there was uh, going to be a strong safety blitz. He comes over against the twin set and uh, comes from the outside. Roderick does a nice job recognizing it. Jumps, spins to the outside, has uh, one man to beat, then uh, gets to the yard marker close to the first down. David Williams, the free safety on the stop. He broke his arm midway through the season against Illinois Valley, but was back in two weeks. Johnson in the middle this time, trying for the first down. Looks like they'll mark the ball inside the 35. That would be enough for a Dixie first down. Bill Unger, the linebacker, along with Dan Wilhelm, in on the stop for Grand Rapids. But it will be a first down for the Rebels. Here you go, just hat on hat right here, fullback block inside, and uh, Roderick just got to get over the top, just over that line to get the first down. Trying to squeeze a little extra out of it, marking the football on his own, trying to give the officials a hand. First and 10 for the Rebels at the 35 of Grand Rapids. Dixie on the march for the first time. And 
Gross out a throw on first down. Steps up, drops it over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Michael Hutchings. He had a step on the defender, but the pass was just slightly overthrown. Uh, Ken there, Steve. TD uh, is going to want a couple of these balls back, but they're recognizing right now they're playing cover one. One coverage, meaning the free safety playing deep, and they've had man coverage and chances there to complete that football. But... Uh, Boy, they've got some opportunities here, and the pressure is something that looks like Dixie's starting to handle pretty well. Have the step on Sean Blackman, but they couldn't connect. Second down and 10. The pitch to Roderick Katz, and cuts inside a block. Wrapped up to the 30, but not completely, and drags the tackler for another couple of yards down to the 28-yard line. And Sean Blackman finally there to bring him down along with help from Carmel Dennis, the linebacker. But Roderick Johnson with a nice pickup of seven. That may be Roderick's best play right there as a toss play because once you see him take the pitch and go outside, you start to see the defenders move, and he can really do a good job of stepping and turning upside and finding a gap and going as he did there. So look for that play starting to come more and more here, Steve. Third down, we'll call it four. Roshoff makes the pitch this time, dumps it off to the tight end, caught by Orton inside the 25 and down to the 23-yard line. And that'll be good for another Dixie first down. Bucky Orton, a 6'4", 225-pound freshman from Kanab, Utah, with his fifth catch of the year, and it's good for a first down. The same play that we saw there, Steve, that got the uh, nice gain, the fake to the toss, the naked back to the other side, and uh, uh, good call, good play right there. You know, we had seven, eight guys in the box right there trying to take away that uh, run game again, but uh, a good changeup by Coach Jolly calling the plays. Jeff Purton in on the stop along with Sean Blackman, and that will end our first quarter of play. And a good battle here in the first quarter. Grand Rapids with the best opportunities, a couple of missed field goals, but they were unable to convert. And at the end of one in the 11 Dixie Rotary Bowl, Grand Rapids and Dixie are scoreless. It's time for buyback bargains at Menlove Dodge Toyota. Automatic 96 Dodge Caravans loaded just $17,795. 96 Neons Automatic and Air only $10,495. And every Menlove factory buyback includes a three-day, 200-mile money-back guarantee. From the last of the little guys. Menlove Dodge Toyota. From Aerosmith to Zeppelin, KLZX plays all classic rock along the Wasatch Front all the time. KLZX. I have cable TV, which means that in addition to cable channels, I can still watch local programming. So? When you sell a DBS system to a customer, do you tell them they can't receive their local stations anymore? Nobody watches local programming anymore. What about local news, sports, and weather? That's what newspapers are for. Newspapers? Well, if they insist on watching local channels, then I just sell them a regular antenna. Regular antenna? A regular antenna. If you're thinking about DBS, you might want to think twice. Cable TV, still the best value in quality entertainment. This one's kind of fun. MC truck, you don't just cruise the road, you take control of it. You view the world from a different vantage point, and you have the power to do it all. So get comfortably in command with a new GMC from your Color Country GMC dealers today. We have our new uh, regional park located between St. George and Hurricane City and in an area that they call Purgatory Flat. And while it's designed oriented toward equestrian uses, it's really a multi-purpose facility. And we think it'll be a great asset to not only the people of Washington County, but we look at it as something that will attract people from many other parts of the country. Washington County Commission striving to make our community better. Proud sponsor of the Dixie Rotary Bowl. Mountain Fuel is pleased to present the annual Rotary Bowl football game at the Hanson Stadium in St. George. Mountain Fuel is also proud to be part of this great community, hosting the 11th annual nationally recognized Rotary Bowl. Mountain Fuel has been serving Southern Utah for nearly 10 years. When it comes to your fuel needs, you can count on Mountain Fuel. Be sure to support the businesses who lend their resources in building our local communities. No score, early 
second quarter, the Dixie Rotary Bowl. Roderick Johnson was just brought down for a loss of a couple of yards, and then there was some, some pushing and shoving and some trash talking, and the markers flew. And now the officials are trying to sort out which team should be penalized or if we have a coinciding penalties here. Steve, you can see right now that uh, you know the, the the cobwebs are getting out of all these guys uh, being off for four or five weeks. Uh, the intensity is really starting to pick up. The blocks are getting stronger. They're getting harder. And, uh, uh, you know, you just see a little result of that same thing. Well, we talked with Fred Julian, the head coach of Grand Rapids last night, and uh, they didn't practice for two weeks to three weeks after the regular season ended waiting for a bowl bit and then they only had one or two outdoor practices until they came to Las Vegas this week. Well that's right being on that east side of the, of the uh, Lake Michigan you know with the lake effect snow and the big things that they've been having uh, most of their workouts have been inside the gymnasium so um, they were very anxious to get out here and uh, travel to uh, Las Vegas spend a couple of days there practicing at uh, uh, UNLV and uh, uh, trying to get uh, acclimated to the climate and then coming up Thursday for uh, um, the rest of the uh, workout. So a personal foul on that play against the Rebels moves them back another 15 yards on top of the loss. And so that'll push it all the way back to the 38-yard line. So it'll be second and 25 for the Rebels. And no score early second quarter. Again, Grand Rapids has had a couple of scoring opportunities. But John Latinovich has missed field goals of 28 and 42. Well, a personal foul came in a dead ball situation, so it is third down, and they set up the screen to Hutchings. Inside the 35, has some blocks. Inside the 25, it tripped up at the 22-yard line by Shane Hollins, the safety. So a good game, but well short of the first down for Michael Hutchings. Perfect play to set up right here is uh, the middle or inside screen by the receiver. Now they they send uh, Roderick Johnson right. They they let the defense go. Bring the receiver inside to follow his lineman up there, and he gains back the penalty plus a couple. So um, we're going to have to have a field goal try, and and uh, maybe we can get somebody on the board here. Brandon Inaway, seven out of fourteen in the field goal department this year, will attempt a twenty eight. 38-yarder from the 28-yard line. Freshman out of Orem, Utah. To try to give the Rebels the lead. Snap down, kick is underway, and it is no good. So the field goal kicker is struggling here in the first half at the Dixie Rotary Bowl as Latinovich misses two for Grand Rapids, and now Inouye is wide for the Rebels. And so nothing but goose eggs on the board. And now the... Raiders take over, first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. I think we've got a goalpost down there, Steve, that's haunted. Uh, <laughs> all three kicks so far have been wide left. So now Grand Rapids starting at their own 21-yard line, their worst field position of the afternoon, and there's no wind to speak of. As you see Old Glory hanging limp on the pole down at that north end zone. On the delay, here's Cochran stumbles after he picks up the football and gains maybe three as he lost his balance after receiving the handoff from Struinski. And number 52, Just a little draw play right there, trying to take advantage of the Dixie uh, rush upfield. And um, again, he had a little bit of a, a daylight here. Uh, just got sna snagged by the defender and uh, brought down for a three-yard gain. They have even tripped a little bit over the foot of Andy Dowser, his left guard, as Dowser pulled on the play. Gain of two, second and eight. Ball wide to the near side, Redrick to the far side. Kowinski on the delay, and again a short gain for Rob Thorogood. Back up tailback who had checked in, picks up maybe a yard to the 24. And still leaves Grand Rapids with a third and long. It was interesting in talking to the coaching staff of Grand Rapids. They weren't really concerned about their pass-to-run ratio, but their pass-to-run production, their yardage gained by each means. That's right, and I think what they're really looking at is not only that production, but the efficiency in that production, and that's gaining four or five yards of play and making each one uh, the best it can be. Grand Rapids back to the double tight end that was successful at times in the first quarter and whistle sound and let's see possibly 
the play clock ran out before the ball was snapped. Either way, it'll be five yards against the Raiders, leaving them with a third and a 12. And it was delay of game against Grand Rapids. And little things like that will drive the head coaches today crazy. Oh, yeah, and Fred Julian over there is just walking and, and storming. He's uh, not real happy with that kind of outcome, particularly uh, uh, on third down. And the double tight end with ball wide to the near side. It's Growinski rolling this way. Looking, nobody open. He'll tuck it under and run and slide to a halt at the 22-yard line. Got bumped down after the slide, but contact came right really at the beginning of the slide, so no worry about any kind of a, a late hit. Strowinski picks up a couple, but well short of the first down. Again, trying to stay on the outside with the sprint out pass, natural to his right side. Uh, you know, good good zone coverage right there and taking uh, the uh, Raider receivers out of the play. He had to tuck it up and go outside and run. Caleb Natuvaya with the force down on Strowinski there. Now Latinovich is in to punt. Low snap, handles it. Perkins will let it bounce and takes the hop at the 37. Slips through the one tackle and finally dives ahead to the 45-yard line. So a little bit of a gamble by Perkins, but it pays off for about seven extra yards out to the 45-yard line. And so good starting position for the Dixie Rebels as they try to break through on the scoreboard. It's scoreless here at the Rotary Bowl. I am the Arizona Wildcat, the embodiment of spirit, of pride, of fury. Just one in a great lineage that have been so blessed. Which begs the question, who was the jerk who wanted all their gum in my snout? Hi, Bob Vila here to show you a unique new craftsman tool no home should be without. Craftsman Handicut Utility Cutters, the one tool you can count on for all kinds of tough cutting jobs. Craftsman Handicut does the job of utility knives, carpet knives, shears, shop cutters, and more. Look how tough it is to make a good cut through this damaged garden hose with a utility knife. Craftsman Handicut gets it done in one clean cut. It's a terrific small branch and shrub pruner. Shears or shop cutters can't trim vinyl flooring as easily as the Craftsman Handicut. Use the Craftsman Handicut to cut nearly any common household material, including rope, plastic, leather, vinyl, and rubber. Call now, and you can order your Craftsman Handicut for only $19.99. And remember, when you buy from Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. To order your Craftsman Handicut, get your Sears card or the credit card ready and call 1-800-253-8665. That's 1-800-253-8665. Call right now. No score on a beautiful afternoon here at Dixie College in St. George, Utah, but the afternoon is over for Shalu Alafipo, an outside linebacker. A late hit on that return, and the officials have indicated he has been ejected from the game. Well, a little hit, late hit, a little uh, pushing and shoving, and uh, getting caught as the last man throwing the punch. You're going to get something like that. I know the uh, uh, the coaching staff at Dixie is talking to all of their lineup down there and telling them to keep themselves uh, square and let's play just a hard-fought football game. First and 10 at their own 30. The quick end to Cleavon Brooks, and he has got it. He's out across the 40. To the 41 for a first down as Sean Blackman had trouble bringing Cleavon Brooks down. Brooks, a freshman out of Las Vegas with his 11th catch of the year. Again, just, just something to get the offense back on track here again. A quick three-step drop by T.D. Croshaw. Little hitch on the outside. Go get all you can, and uh, he makes the first down. This Dixie offense, first in the nation in total offense, second in rushing offense, and ninth in passing offense. 11 yards and a first down. In motion, the fullback cap. And the pitch is to Roderick Johnson. He gets struck out and dropped. Good pursuit that time by the veteran David Williams. And I say veteran, Mary, he's 26 years old, played in a bowl game for Grand Rapids back in 1988 and then entered the Navy. I think he may be the only guy that has an eight-year red shirt. So, uh, but you see that time Dixie trying to use the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, 
toss play right there, trying to go to the weak side, and they just had too many defenders over there for them to make that a successful play. Williams played in the Valley of the Sun Bowl for Grand Rapids. Then he came back a lot more mature, and uh, Coach Julian feels he could play Division II football next year. Little swing out to Johnson. He better cover up on that. That ball was backwards. But apparently the officials blew the whistle as an incomplete pass, but Harry, that pass, that was that was backwards. That was a lateral. That should have been a live football. Clearly, that ball was a uh, 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 lateral right there. And uh, boy, I'm going to tell you what, a good hometown call right there by the official saves Dixie a, a uh, going down six nothing early in the second quarter. A big break indeed for the Rebels. Leaves it third down and 15 from their own 36-yard line. Just under nine and a half minutes remaining, scoreless in a game a lot of people thought would be high-powered into the 30s, possibly the 40s. Roshaw with time. And the pass incomplete, intended for Hutchings, but the ball underthrown. Coverage belongs to Sean Blackman and also Shane Hollins. But once again, the Rebel offense is stymied, and they'll have to kick it away. That time on the right there on the drop back pass we just had too much pressure and td croshaw had to get that ball off i think just a little bit earlier than he wanted to you can see the receiver right there going to run the curl inside and he just hadn't gone through his cut yet looked like a delayed blitz by carmel dennis forced him to uh, release it a little too soon so he's frustrated indeed on the sidelines as hollins is back to receive the punt from neil winterton Shane Hollins for Grand Rapids back at his own 25 as Winterton pops a high fly ball and hits at the 30, takes a big Dixie bounce before angling out of bounds. And the officials will mark it at the 16-yard line. A good break for the putter, Neil Winterton. And not a lot of distance through the air, but a great hop pushes the Raider offense back to their own 16-yard line. I'm really surprised at the, the lack of offense. I realize both teams have to be rusty, but I would have expected a little more so far. Well, I think what uh, you're seeing is a little bit more pressure defense by uh, Grand Rapids than maybe uh, uh, Dixie anticipated. And double tight end offense. With Bozek, the near tight end. The far tight end is Van Dyke. And on the counter, the gear is to Cochran, and he gets dragged down for a loss at the 15-yard line. Andrew Takiaho. Andrew Takiaho, the middle linebacker out of Salt Lake City, with the stop, a loss of one. It'll be second and 11. Cochran is taking the, the counter tray play again and trying to go uh, back to the tight inside to the strength of the formation. Uh, Dixie had nine players in the box that time and just had too many people for that play to work. Second down at the 16, 10 yards to go. Strowinski, this time to give us to the fullback, Herrera. And he'll gain a couple out to the 17. So it'll be a second, make that a third down now to nine. Both teams right here are getting ready for this third down play, but uh, again, trying to get the quick opener to the fullback. Uh, trying to pop something inside, anticipating a, another tailback play, uh, brings third down nine. Michael Harama, the fullback, 5'8", freshman, 235 pounds. Drowinski rolling left, looking left, and overthrows Victor Redrick. Would have been good for a first down, but he led him just a little bit too far, and Redrick couldn't put a finger on it, so another punting situation for Grand Rapids. Yeah, right there, Redrick had a nice job of just getting past the sticks, getting the yards you need for the first down. Just didn't get the ball out there to him on time, and he uh, rolled out to his left. Tough play to a quarterback's left being a right hand. A couple of frustrated quarterbacks right now, and T.D. Kroshaw for Dixie and, Stan and Dan Strowinski for Grand Rapids as John Latinovich inside his five-yard line takes the snap and puts it away, and it's blocked. Goes into the end zone, and the putter, Latinovich will try to cover it up, and he does it, touchdown! A black punt, and I believe it was Robert Barlow Jr. who recovers in the end zone, and Dixie's on the board first. 
think Dixie got a little bit lucky right there uh, by alignment in the fact that uh, one of their players came on late. The uh, Hunt team didn't account for him. So there was one guy to block two guys on the outside there. And uh, to your left side here, you're going to see a guy break free. As a matter of fact, it was a, a look like uh, Dowser or Giroux cutting back to block actually ran into the football. The extra point by Inouye is good. So a big break gives the Rebels the first points of this football game as a punt blocked by one of the Raiders' own men results in a Dixie touchdown. The Rebels are up by seven. To reestablish your credit and get the best loan for your money, you need to call Men Love's Fresh Start Department. My wife called, found out they could help us. They said, come on down and pick out your car. We are just starting out and had to establish our credit, and we did it through Men Love Dodge Fresh Start Program. If it hadn't been for Men Love Dodge, we would never have gotten the financing or the van that we needed when we needed it. There's only one fresh start, and it's at Men Love. Men Love Dodge Toyota. At the Kylie's, the bread is fresh, the vegetables hot, and there's only one Mrs. Kylie's casserole. And there's only one TV in the entire house hooked up to their satellite dish. So if you're ever at the Kylie's and want to watch your favorite show after dinner, remember, it's first come, first serve. 